Hello, my name is Henry Renfrey, and this is a Godot 2D game development tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a global player. So, you know, in Godot, every scene is self contained. Global player is when you're playing the game and you change scenes, the player's coordinates stay the same even though you change scenes, or you have some universal player coordinates so that every time you change scenes your players coordinates stay the same for example look at this scene that i got right here see you got the player here and then this red thing is like a door or something and that's what's going to change our scene but watch what happens when the player runs to the door the scene changes but the player's position still stays with the player even though we change scenes and that's what I call global player. And, and this is usually done with just a global script. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. Okay, so to set up the scene, the first thing that we need is we need a main controller for our game. And that main controller is going to be this node 2D here. So this entity is parent node for our game. Then second, we need a scene that we're going to start in. And then we need a scene that we're going to, which is going to be scene two. And then we need a level changer. This will be our door. So if our player collides with this door here, it'll go from scene one to scene two. And then finally, we need a player. So now we're just going to save all these. So start with the main, save as main.tscn. Scene one, save as. Scene one dot Scene two, save as scene two dot tscn. Change level. Change and finally Henry dot tscn. Okay, so we got our pieces. Now we just gotta set them up so that we can get the result we want. So we're gonna go back to main, and with this main, we're going to attach a script to this. New script, main.gd, that's good. Okay, so we got, our, we got our script. So the next thing we got to do, we're going to make this script, not the scene, but the script global. So to do that, we're going to go to project, project settings, auto load, click on the folder, main gd, not main.tscn, but main gd. We want our script to be global. Okay, so open, and this node name that's the node name that we're going to call on whenever we want to access these variables inside of our main.gd script okay so click add and we're done with that okay so we got that done so in this main.gd we're going to delete all this stuff and then we're just going to paste in this code right here and these are the variables that are going to control our player a little later on so we'll leave this here and then we'll come back to this later we just go ahead and control S to save it. So the next thing that we're going to do is set up our scene one. So we'll go back to 2D and go back to scene one. And click on scene one. And we're going to click the plus button because we're going to add a background. So we're going to go to sprite. And then we're just going to add the background. Our background is going to come from this folder that I made before this tutorial. This contains all our assets and things we're going to use in our game. So we're just going to load the background to the scene. So load load this blue background here. Okay, so we got our background. Okay, so we're just going to leave this like this for now. We'll come back to this. And we're going to do the same thing for our second background. We're going to go to Sprite. It's already in there. So just click on Sprite. And we're going to load the second background here. And the entity that's going to get us from scene one to scene two is this change level here. This change level is going to be our door. Whenever our player collides with the door, that's when scene two will begin. Okay, so remember, these first three were no 2Ds. See, no 2D, uh, no 2D, and no 2D. But this change level or door, we're going to make that an area 2D node. And all you do is just go to right click and go to change level and 
select area 2D now. I already did that, so, but that's what you can do. And just click change. So, and then we're just gonna add a sprite to that too. So that's what Henry's gonna collide with. With that. And we're just gonna add a texture to it. So we got our texture. And we're just gonna add a collision 2D. So that our player can collide with it. Create 2D, create. And then we're gonna make this a rectangle. So we're just gonna, and then we're gonna resize the rectangle. Okay, that's good enough for our purposes. And we just, we want to, we want Sprite before collision shape so, so we can see our Sprite. And then finally, we're going to add our player. Our player is a kinematic body. And to change it to kinematic body, you just, uh, again, right click, change type, and type in kinematic body 2D. That's what you want. All right, so we got the things that we want. Okay, so. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna deal with the level changer. We're gonna add a script to this level change thing right here. And this again is our door. Click on the first tab, and we're gonna go down to scripts. New script, change level.gd, that's good enough. So I'm gonna just gonna delete all this pre-existing code up here. I'm gonna keep extends area 2D. But at, and after that, I'm just gonna paste in this code, pre-written code that I wrote before the tutorial. This first variable that I have is the variable that's going to alert. It's going to alert this first scene node right here that we're changing levels. And I'll remind you later on of that. But for now, so we created a function on change level body entered. The body refers to the kinematic body because our player is a kinematic body. Remember, we turned it into kinematic body. It, so it says if the body is named Henry. If the body overlaps and the variables and the body's name is Henry, like what we got here, then the next scene will equal true. And then again, that will alert this node right here or the first scene node to change to scene two. And again, I'm going to remind you that again. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to save this. And then We'll go to scene one. See, well, level level changer. Okay, so we got that in there, and we're gonna attach a script to scene one that will respond to this. So, click on the top node, scene one. Click script, new script, scene one GD. Then I'm gonna delete all this stuff in here. Okay, so this code is an extension of this node 2D node. That's why we got extends node 2D. And now I'm just going to paste in this code. Okay, so this is the code for our scene one. And below this delta func process, all we needed, we, we only needed to get features from this change level node right here and its code right here. Namely, we just needed this this Boolean variable right here that would tell the scene variable up here to change and Godot made it easy all we had to do is put this dollar sign in the word change level the name of this node right here and then put dot and then just put the name of the variable that we're trying to use and that variable is here so we just it's just like taking this and then sticking it here so this says if next level is true in Godot, you don't have to write. You know, instead you can just put the word and this implies true. So this says if next scene is true, then then quay free means just to delete scene one or delete this node right here. I mean, you can put whatever you want down here. You can change the position of scene one or whatever you want but for this tutorial this is what we're doing what, whatever you want to put here is, is kind of like beyond the scope of this tutorial okay so we're done with that part okay so now we're going to work with the player uh, we're going to add a, a sprite to our player so that we can see and then 
we'll go to texture load we're just gonna load the sprite right here you can have whatever sprite you want um, this is just what I'm using and then I'm gonna add a collision shape to it so that we can actually collide otherwise if you don't have a collision shape it's not gonna work properly okay we got a collision shape uh, I like the sprite above collision shape so we can see it see the sprite then click on collision shape I'm gonna just use a box and then I'm just gonna make sure this thing is collected and then I'm just gonna resize it that's good enough for our purposes okay so that's what we need and then we're just gonna attach a script to Henry script new script Henry.gd that's good okay so so we're just, we're just trying to get our player to move it. We don't want anything too fancy. So I'm just going to paste in this code here. So it just says UI right refers to the right arrow key. And, and you can just you can just write this down. I mean, you can always change the names of what these things are. These are just the default out of the box variable names. Right arrow key. And this is the out of box variable for the left arrow key. So you can just put this. So it says if you press the right arrow key. Now let's go back to our main script. Do you remember these variables that we established from our main script at the beginning? Well, this is what's going to control the player. First, we got this. Just put this. We need this for our moving slide function. It's just what I use to work with our moving slide function because our moving slide function needs a parameter. We created a variable for our vector mode, which is going to allow our player to move. The vector two has two parameters. Has an X, which would allow our player to go from right to left, and Y, which would allow our player to go up and down. We keep these uh, blank, and we just set it to the variable. And then we got our speed. We established this at the beginning. And remember, in order to grab these variables, we have to first use the name main. Remember, that's the name we gave it earlier. Remember, main. So that's the name we gave it. So, in order to use these variables. Let's go back to our Henry script. Use the word the main because we're, we're taking this from the main script, and then move. We're using the x portion of this variable. So x, and then we're using the main 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 speed main speed. So we use the main version of speed. So you use the name of this that we gave the script again to access this and put the word speed because we're using that variable from the main script. And then we just bring down our delta right here. Delta just regulates the speed. Okay, so, so that's how you move. And we did the same thing for our left. We, we again use the same main and this time we'll move to the left. Remember, plus has to do with going right. And, and to move the player left, we put this minus here. And then we again add the speed that we got from our main script. And then so this has to do with movement. If we're not moving, otherwise, else means otherwise, if we're not moving, our player will stop. And this zero just cancels out these speeds here. Okay, so that's what that does. And then we attach our our move variables to this move and slide function. So we took the main move, it equals the function move and slide and then we just add this we just need something for this second parameter this the y parameter here let's see once again remember we have two parameters there x and y we just needed something for this y parameter so that's why we put this here and notice throughout this code we're not actually using y we're just moving right and left for now we, we don't need y right i mean you can always go back and And, and then change this to Y, and then put up and down here, and then our player will move down. But for this tutorial, we're not we're not dealing with Y. Okay, so let me see in with this pass pass function that takes care of our characters moving. So just hit a uh, control s to save okay so now we're gonna go back to our 2d mode we'll go to the main and now we're just gonna add all this stuff into the we don't need change level anymore so because 
we already put it inside of this scene one here, so we can just close that. Now, now that we got all the scenes saved, we're just gonna add all the stuff into this main thing. So main, add scene one, main, add scene two, main, add the player in. And we'll just start scene one. And like I say, I'm just trying to show you the main idea on how to allow this main function to control this character so that we can get the coordinates, same coordinates when we change the scene. Okay, so we got everything in our scene. Okay, so finally I'm going to add a camera. So main camera 2D. Can't make sure the camera is selecting, click current on. And then I'm just going to move this character to the right a little bit. When we launch our game, we're going to try to get this main scene here. So we're going to uh, go to project, project settings, uh, general, run, folder, and we just choose our, our main scene. And one final thing that we got to do is we got to go to, back to scene one, and we just got to turn this this change level function on, this area 2D on. To, or make our alert potent. Make sure you click change level, click node, body enter, connect, uh, change level, connect. And what would happen after you do that? You'd get a function. All you would give is just this function here. If that's what you get when you when you do that, just keep this here. But that's the situation. We already had this here, so it, this was already here from the beginning. Okay, so got that. Make sure you save it. Uh, go back to our main scene. Okay, so let's see what happens when we launch our game. Okay, so we got our player right here and we got a door. So let's see what happens when we run to the door. Whoop! So now we're in scene two. You notice our player's coordinates still stay the same even though we change scene. And one more thing is, let's close out these scenes, these other scenes. And last thing is, you can always determine what you want to do with scene two while scene one is going on. I'll let you all deal with that. But one example is you can, let's say, attach a script to scene two. And then you can maybe have scene two like very, very far away. So that scene two doesn't interfere with scene one while it's going, or something like this. So then, so I guess when you launch your game again, and you put this here, while scene one is operating, scene two won't interfere. And scene two will be way over here, about 3,000 pixels off screen, so it won't interfere with scene one. And that's why you don't see scene two right now, because it's way 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 off screen somewhere you can also go to scene one and just paste in this to bring in this scene two node and put it here and then wrap it to this function and then attach a variable called scene two to this function variable and then you can place this here so that whenever scene one disappears and it's done it'll just bring scene two over you know that is scene two will go from being in the 3000 mark way off screen to coming over to the x0 mark where you can see scene two let's make sure this is a lowercase not uppercase now let me show you what happens see now once you Done with scene one. Uh, here, scene two starts over here in the zero mark over here, right here in this upper corner. So that just brings everything over. You can actually put whatever you want down here or change it however you like it. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial. So that's how you get global character. You can take what you learn in this tutorial and expand on it. Until next time. Thanks. Bye. Yeah.